This past Friday, December 14th, 2012, we experienced one of the greatest tragedies that we've experienced in the United States in several years, watching several kids uh, killed by a gunman in their own school. And this has sparked all sorts of questions in the hearts of Americans and probably people throughout the entire world. And these questions are all good. Some of them questioning, you know, how God could allow something like this to happen. Some of them questioning our policies, such as our gun control laws, our prayer in school. They'd all make worthy YouTube videos. Um, and maybe I'll address some of those in the future. And certainly if people have other questions they'd like me to address, you know, please let me know. But today I just really want to offer a message of hope and how we Christians can move forward. You know, one of the things that we need to remember about our faith is that our faith tells us from the Gospel of John that the light shines in the darkness and the darkness does not overcome it. You know, so often in our world, it's easy for us to fall into despair and to believe that darkness does in fact overcome the light. And especially when we see events like we saw happen on Friday and all the images that have come out and the stories that have come out, we sit here and say, it seems that the darkness has indeed overcome the world. I've even heard one psychologist, though, talk and say, you know, well, we shouldn't, it's, it's bad, but we shouldn't call this evil. And I thought that's crazy. This is certainly evil. Evil is a privation of the good. And that's exactly what we witnessed, is a privation of the good happened in Connecticut on Friday. But what we have to remember as, as Christians is that this evil, as bad as it is, doesn't conquer. It's not a conquering evil. It's victorious, perhaps, in certain moments. But ultimately, our faith is that God is the one who will conquer, that life conquers death, that light conquers the darkness. As Christians, we are called to be people with hope to bring. We are called to be people of hope and joy and to bring that message out into the world. There was a great irony this weekend for the Catholics in the United States as we celebrated Gaudete Sunday. Gaudete Sunday is a Sunday meant to be a rejoicing Sunday. It's where we light the pink candle on the Advent wreath as a sign of the light shining in the darkness and lightening the darkness of the world. And we did this with very heavy hearts, almost with no reason whatsoever to rejoice. But what we have to remember is that our joy comes not from the fact that we live in a world that's pure bliss, because we don't. Our joy comes from the fact that God is going to send us a Savior, and that God is going to redeem the world. And that's the joy that we have as Christians. And I think now more than ever, it's important for us to share that joy with one another, because the only way that darkness can be overcome is if we bring light into the world. And I'm not saying we make light of the situation, but we bring our light of faith into the world and share that with people. Share the good news that this tragedy, as horrible as it is, isn't the end. It doesn't have the last say. That God has the final say. That life wins out over death. That darkness does not conquer the light. And we need to do that in our everyday lives. You know, so often I think we always tend to think, oh, I can't make much of a difference in the world. I'm one person. I'm a small person. I'm not a Mother Teresa or something like that. But what we can do is we can be a beacon of light for those who we do interact with, for those in our sphere of influence, so to speak. And we can do that by just sharing the joy of our faith with one another. You know, so often we buy into this mentality that our faith is a private matter. The problem with that is we can't be a beacon of light if we're going to be hidden under a bushel basket. Jesus Christ says as much. We need to bring our faith out into the public world, and we let, need to let the people know that we have good news to share with them. This good news is that life and light conquer the power of darkness, that as bleak as things seem in our world, we know that God is going to win out in the end, that life wins out in the end, and that all this darkness will be wiped away and redeemed by God. That's the whole point of the death and resurrection of Christ. In the Passion and in his death, we see a very dark and bleak moment in the history of the church and the history of humanity and in our salvation history. But from that dark moment where we actually kill God to the resurrection, we learn that life wins out. Not only that, but we learn that joy and forgiveness went out over grudges and anger. And I'm not saying we shouldn't be angry. We should be angry when we see evil. But we know that our, our hope and what we know is that that anger isn't going to be an eternal anger because in the end, God will redeem and transform all of that into joy and into peace. That's what we see happen in the resurrection. Christ is raised from the dead, showing that life has power over death. And then he comes to the people who betrayed him and killed him and says, Peace. 
showing that these peaceful relationships went out over our human grudges and our human anger. This is the good news that we need to bring into our world today. Our world so desperately needs to hear that. And we need to bring it into our world where we can. We might not be able to fix what's happened in the past. And we might not be able to take away everybody's pain and sorrow. But what we can do is we can give them hope. We can give them hope that their suffering will be redeemed, that there is redemption that's going to occur. And we can bring that to our coworkers. We can bring that to our families, to our friends, to the people that we interact with on a daily basis. And I think now more than ever, that's what we need to be doing as a Christian people in light of this tragedy, is to say, how can I be somebody who's a beacon of hope? I can't solve the problem. I can't destroy people's sorrow. I can't transform it completely into bliss, especially at this point. But what I can do is I can be that little light. And if we have enough little lights, we can, in fact, transform the world. And that's the good news of our gospel. That's our mission as Christians, is to begin that transforming process that we know God will ultimately bring to completion. Our hope isn't in this world, but at the same time, it doesn't mean that we abandon this world. Because our hope is that this world will be redeemed, ultimately by God, yes. But we can do our part to begin that redemption, redemptive process. And it's so important, I think, for us to do that now. And so that's the message of hope that I want to bring forward. And we'll talk more about some of the other issues as we as time passes and we continue on on these YouTube videos. And if you have questions of your own, you know, email me and I'll try to write responses uh, or do video responses to those as well. But in the meantime, try to be a beacon of hope and bring the message of good news to all those who you meet.